Welcome to the Hockey Writers Prospect Corner, a show with our top prospects writing crew, bringing you the latest news, analysis, scouting reports, mocks, rankings, and much more. From the world juniors to the NHL draft floor, from the farm to the NHL, our team covers everything that happens in the world of prospects. So sit back, grab a notebook, and get ready for Prospect Corner. Prospect Corner. everybody and welcome into the prospect corner for another week of hockey and prospect talk uh, again joined in by peter barracchini and greg boyce and uh how are you guys doing this week doing good doing good doing great yeah it's uh i mean we're getting closer and closer to world juniors uh a lot of players trying to you know be impressed to make those teams and we'll see how that all uh, shakes down in the next few weeks but this episode, before we start getting talking about those rosters and all that talk in the next few weeks, uh, we're just going to run through the divisions in the NHL. And uh, I mean, last time we talked about a lot of these teams was back before the season began. So there's a lot of prospects that have played uh, a lot of games and uh, we're going to highlight a few in each division. Um, we'll start out West with the Pacific, uh, Pacific division here. And we're going to highlight uh Carter Savoy to start here, an Edmonton Oilers prospect, drafted a couple of years ago, uh, NCAA, he's playing uh, at the University of Denver, and he's, I mean, last year he was, he had a, lo- a great year, 13 goals, 20 in 20 points in 24 games, this year, doing the same, uh, 10 goals, 17 points in 10 games, and uh, I was high on him during my, um, you know, draft coverage at, back then, and well, I, I went, on, went on Twitter and I said, well, he's a first round pick. I got skewered. I mean, there are so many guys that, that were saying, well, what the heck is this guy talking about? First round pick. Um, he's proven he's proven a lot of people wrong that you know, he's drafted quite low. Uh, Peter, we'll go doing this one. Uh, what do you like about his game? Uh, what do you think his ceiling is in the NHL? Or is it just that he's going to be an NCAA guy and maybe not make the NHL? What do you think? Yeah, you might have been onto something because uh, I was kind of shocked to see him drop to the fourth round, especially 100th overall, and the Edmonton Oilers just picked him up right then and there. I initially thought of him as, you know, at least a decent second round pick, maybe early third, depending on, you know, if teams are willing to bet on a five foot nine type of player. And I think that's what it may have thrown a lot of teams off, you know, the size factor. But, you know, he may not be the tallest guy, but he doesn't, he definitely has you know, the weight to his game. He's got, he's 192 pounds. So if you're worried about him being smaller compared to a six foot one guy, he has the strength to stay up and go up against any other player in the league. So I, I think that, you know, his game is obviously his offensive game is, is what stands out the most. I mean, going back to his draft year where he had 99 points and 53 goals, 13 with the university of Denver and 11 already this year. Um, he's just an offensive dynamic goal scorer. I mean, he could hurt you in so many ways in tight with his quick hands from a long range with his, uh, accurate shot. Um, he knows how to, you know, get opponents off their game. Like he, he, it seems like he's always thinking one step ahead to get players out of uh, position, get to the open nice and utilize his chances and his shot and his offensive awareness. And just looking at, um, the points per game for, uh, the NCAA currently at this point, he's ranked third with 1.63 uh, behind Drew Drew Warad and Ethan Frank. Um, so obviously those two were seniors, but for him to be, you know, a sophomore player, high point per game average, um, goal scoring abilities, I, I, he's, he's, I mean, there's no other way around it. Like this is a player that, you know, a lot of teams were thrown off and now the Edmonton Warriors are reaping the rewards right now because he's going to be a dangerous shooter and a dangerous goal scorer possibly in the future. Yeah. I mean, like I said, during that draft, I thought he wasn't going to go that low. I thought he was going to be at least a second round pick. And uh, you know, that was a, it was funny because on Twitter I said it was a hot take and they said, well, give me your hot takes. And I'm like, why are you skewering me? It's a hot take. (laughs) (laughs) That's the whole point of it. (laughs) That's the whole point of it. But uh, yeah, he, he's, uh, he's proven a lot in, in the NCAA because it's a higher league, but I mean, I mean, we'll see what happens when he makes it to the NHL because if he does, so uh, that's another step up and uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, 
We're going to go to another guy that, again, I mean, this is a trend here. <laughs> and this one is a guy who's drafted way too low. Uh, Sasha passed the job. We talked about in the past. He's lighting it up in the OHL with the Guelph Storm. 15 goals in 16 games. He's on a five-game goal streak right now. I mean, he's just – he's showing why he should have been drafted a lot higher. And the Ducks have just <laughs> cut a steal here. Uh, Greg, what, what do you think about this guy? I mean, he, what makes him so lethal as a goal scorer? He's just, he just seems to be just scoring at will right now. Uh, do you see a future with the Ducks, though? I mean, the Ducks have a loaded prospect pool right now. You see what's happening with them in the NHL. Um, what do you think about Passage off? Well, he definitely does have a future uh, with the Ducks or – you know, he could be a very good trade chip down the road. You know, you got to remember prospects are, are assets, you know, just because the team drafted him doesn't mean that's where they're going to play. And as you mentioned, the ducks have a ton of talent, so who knows, but he definitely has a future in the league. He's one of those guys, as you mentioned that I couldn't believe fell in the third round. Um, he was a guy I wanted my Blackhawks to take with that pick in the first round. And then there are two picks in the second round and they pass them up all the time. You know, you gotta get, you gotta get your, your, your average players, little brothers on your team. So don't take the best player available. I'm not bitter though, but uh, I mean, <laughs> you want to know what makes him a good, a great deadly goal scorer. It's his shot. He's got a great shot, plain and simple. Um, but to expand on that, um, you know, he's so good in the tight areas. Uh, he's so good at using his body to keep defenders off of him and thus creating scoring chances. And he's, he's a, just an elite level passer and stick handler uh, at this for, you know, his point in this career. And that helps him create scoring chances, not only for him, but also for his teammates. Cause if you look through his stats, he's always been, you know, uh, willing to set up his teammates. He's always been a big assist guy as well as a big goal guy. I mean, he's got 16 goals and 13 assists this year in 17 games uh, for the storm. And, you know, he's always been, he's always had more assists than goals. So, um, but it's that passing ability and stick handling ability that tends to get defenders to kind of back off a little bit of him because they think, Hey, maybe he'll, he wants to pass here and then boom, he's got space to show off that great shot and catch goalies off guard. So um, he's, he's definitely a talented player that should not have been drafted in the third round. And there's going to be a lot of general managers that are going to be kicking themselves uh, or maybe unemployed because they didn't draft a guy like him. <laughs> and um, you know, he's, he's going to be definitely somebody we talk about when we get into our world junior coverage is he's going to be one of those exciting players on that uh, U S team heading into the tournament. Yeah. I, he's just, he's just so, like I said, I, I didn't think he should have dropped so low. I mean, he should have been again, a second round pick at least. I mean, so um, yeah, it, it, it's amazing on how these guys are. I mean, again, it doesn't matter where you're going to get drafted. It, it depends on what they do afterwards and we'll see how, how he does uh, when he makes it to, into the AHL and the NHL in the future here. Yeah, for sure. And since we're talking this uh, Pacific division, Matt, you're our rec uh, resident Canucks expert. So I'll throw this next one to you. Uh, Aiden McDonough has become one of the Canucks top prospects, um, even though he was a seventh round draft pick way back in 2019, way back, but, you know, 2019, <laughs> seem, 2019 seems like a decade ago. Uh, he's currently leading Northeastern in scoring. Um, he's got eight goals in 10 games. You know, what kind of improvements have you seen in his game since he was he was drafted? Um, and, and is he going to be the Canucks top prospect now that uh, Paul Zilkin and uh, Rathbone are graduates? They're full time NHLers. What do you think about McDonough? I mean, I, I've been impressed by this guy since he was drafted by the Canucks. I mean, seventh round pick, I think why he dropped that low is his skating. And he wasn't the best skater when he was drafted. He's gotten better. He's gotten a, a skating coach. He's working with a skating coach in um, at Northeastern. And you see a difference in his game when you watch him. He, he's a lot faster. Uh, he's always had a great shot. And that's what he scores on a lot. It's very, very quick, very um, NHL level wrist shot and he's got a great one timer on the power play as well so you can see why he's scoring uh right now and he just can't seem to stop scoring he's got eight and ten right now and he's playing on the top line um 
and he's he's just he's everything for for northeastern right now and there's a lot of improvements i think his skating was his biggest weakness and he's improved that we'll see how much of an improvement to be able to play at the nhl level but we'll see when that when he gets there and he probably will will sign that to elc um because he has to in the off season here for uh, term pro so as for being the number one prospect it, him being number one over pod Coles and rathbone i mean once they're gone he is definitely there uh klimovich may have something to say about that <laughs> but uh right now he, he's definitely in the top three um i don't know how much that says about the canucks prospect pool having a seventh round pick being in your top three prospects right now but um, i mean he's he's just been amazing and it's going to be great to see him in the future yeah so i mean that's specific division we'll go we'll go around the table here and just pick your best prospect currently in the Pacific. It could be one of these guys. Uh, we'll see. Um, Peter, we'll start with you. Um, who do you think is the best prospect in the Pacific division right now? I'm going to stick with the Edmonton Oilers and I'm going to say Xavier Borgo, Borgo on a Shawinigan again, cataracts. Um, I mean, j- just looking at his numbers, I mean, in his draft year or his draft year pl- uh, minus one, he had 71 points. Um, last year alone, he had 40 in 29 games and, you know, was slated to be, um, you know, or slated to possibly break and even surpass his previous year's total. Right now he's at 31 points in 17 games, 16 goals, 15 assists, just under two points per game right now, that kind of production, he, it's just been very consistent in that regards. He's heavy on the puck. He's got a fantastic shot great playmaking abilities. And he has that two-way game uh, to his advantage as well. He's very reliable in the defensive zone. So if you need him to be a difference maker and get a goal, you're going to rely on him. You need him to, you know, save a two, one, three, two, one goal lead. You're going to rely on him to win a face off and be a steady defensive presence on that back end. So it, I, I don't know if that offensive production is going to translate to the NHL, but he's definitely going to be a valuable asset to the Oilers. And from here on out, I think it's just going to get better for him. Yeah. Borgo's a, an impressive prospect. I mean, I, I was going to pick to talk about him in this uh, section too, but uh, we've talked about him in the past. Um, so I focus on a few other guys, but yeah, he's definitely a guy to watch and not like the Oilers need more talent on that roster, but uh, <laughs> to play Pacific David and dry setup. I mean, they do need depth um, to win. So uh, we'll see how, how much they'll um, contribute to that. Um, Greg, uh, who's your pick for the best prospect in uh, Pacific division? I had a couple guys written down mainly because um, I wasn't sure who Peter was going to pick and <laughs> B because this division prospect wise is stacked. I mean, it may not be the best division in hockey right now, but in a couple years of all these guys pan totally. out, it's going to be pretty tough. There's some, every team's got a couple of really good prospects, but I'm going to pick a guy that even though he hasn't played this year because of injury, I still think he's not only the best prospect in the division, but maybe the best overall prospect in hockey. And that's Quinton Byfield mm-hmm. with the LA yeah. Kings. Um, him getting injured in, in preseason was just, it was a gut punch. Cause I I'm not a Kings fan, but God, I was looking forward to yeah. seeing him play. So hopefully, you know, there's, he could be back in the next few weeks. I know, I know you guys up north are holding out hopes that he's healthy enough for the world juniors. We'll see. I don't know if the Kings will want that coming off of an injury, but this kid's got everything you possibly could want in a center. I mean, he's got star power. He's got size. He can skate. He's great passer and he's got a killer shot. I mean, he's got it all. I think he's going to be a superstar and, and a, a guy that, you know, this game, as a whole needs um, going forward, trying to, you know, with the hockey for everybody, if one of your best players, you know, is out there proving that then, um, you know, it, it's a good thing for everybody. So that's who I'm picking. I, I'm a huge fan of Byfield and I can't wait till he gets back on the ice. Yeah. Yeah. They're I mean, this division is stacked and the fact that we picked three guys <laughs> that are picks or that could, I mean, arguably could be all be top prospects. And right now, I mean, my pick is William Eklund, uh, San Jose mm-hmm. Sharks and just sent back to Europe, um, had a great showing. We talked about him, uh, I think it was last episode or episode before, um, that he looked fine in the NHL. And, uh, I think he's just going to be one of the better, Again, the Sharks got a steal where they got him. He was 
could have been a first overall pick this past draft. Um, his skills off the charts. He looks like he's, he fits in the NHL. And uh, like we said, this division is going to be so stacked with young talent. And uh, I mean, we'll see. This is going to probably be the best division to watch in the coming years and very exciting. Um, so I definitely keep an eye on all these guys. So yeah, Eklund's my pick uh, for that. And all three of these guys arguably could be there. So um, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, let's go to the central division now. And uh, talk about a few prospects here, starting with uh, Cole Perfetti, uh, Winnipeg Jets. Uh, back in the AHL, very successful first season, four goals, nine points, uh, 11 games. Peter, uh, what do you think his ceiling is uh, for Perfetti? I mean, he's we, we talked about him the, during the draft coverage and stuff like that. And what type of ceiling does he got? Um, I think at the moment right now, you're looking at top six potential. Um possibly um, it, it depends on where you want to utilize him. He has the potential to be a very effective top line winger, but I think center wise, if you want to go that route, maybe he has the potential to be a second line center and be a complimentary goal scorer. Um, despite the fact that, you know, he, he had 111 points and, you know, basically the production did transfer over. I mean, successful first season in 2021, shortened year, but still 26 points in 32 games is nothing to laugh at considering, you know, players like him and a bunch of others have had very minimal ice time. So the fact that he's, he was able to produce producing again this year, he's able to take that next step and it's just his puck skills, his vision and his awareness is his greatest asset too. I mean, the way that he reads the ice and the path that he takes, um, it, it, it's just remarkable at how quick he can think on his toes in that regard. And I, I, I think that, you know, if he continues to excel at that rate, obviously the pick is going to work out well because this is a player that should have been in that six to t- in that six to seven, eight range. And the Winnipeg Jets got him at 10th overall. So bit of a steal in that regard. Um, so if he continues to excel, definitely top six potential first line wing upside, um, depending on how they utilize him, but I think he's like either, or he's going to have a bright future regardless. Yeah. It's, it's again, the Winnipeg Jets have a few guys coming up as well and uh, having a good season right now too. Uh, go to another team that has a very deep prospect pool, uh, the Minnesota wild. Uh, they have, they're very surprised. They're a surprising team so far as well. And I mean, you could list off so many guys that they have uh, Marco Rossi being one of the better prospects. They got uh, Matthew Boldy, I mean, out of all their prospects, Greg, who do you think will make the biggest impact at the NHL level? What do you think? Yeah, the, the Wild. Bill Guerin hasn't been there very long, but, man, he's done a lot to um, stack the cupboard there. As you mentioned, Marco Rossi. They got Kalen Addison, who they got uh, in the Jason Zucker trade. Um, Adam Beckman's another talented young And then they still got Carson Lambos even further down the line. So, I mean, they're, they're stacked. Um, you know, my obvious choice for who's going to be the biggest big impact in the NHL um, is Jesper Wallstedt, the goaltender. We've talked about him for ad nauseum here since we started this show, but I mean, he's an elite goaltender. He's got uh, in 13 games as a teenager in Sweden's top league, he's got uh, a 1.8 goals against average and a nine point, uh, a 91.9 save percentage and two shutouts already. So, I mean, he's doing this against, um, you know, veterans in one of the top leagues in the world. So uh, he's going to be fantastic. Um, as far as skaters go, uh, who I think is going to be the biggest impact in the NHL is, is you mentioned him briefly, uh, is Matthew Boldy. I'm a big fan of him. Um, the Wild took him 12th overall in the 2019 draft. Um, you know, he's, he's a really good two-way winger, but can also play center as well. So that versatility always going to help a player, especially a young player, if you can play more in one position, he's, he's scored everywhere he's played in his career. Um, he had 18 games in the AHL with the Iowa wild last year. He had six goals and 12 points. He's missed the, be, uh, the entire season up uh, until this weekend. He, he had a uh, broken, a uh, broken leg in training camp. Um, he returned to the Iowa wild last night and had two goals and assists in his first game in months. So, I mean, the kid is, is a, is a fantastic player, good skater. Uh, he's got high end vision. 
um, great hands and a deadly wrist shot. I think he's going to be a, a terrific player at the NHL level. And uh, Minnesota really has something good going there. They've got a really good team this year, and they've got more exciting young players on the way. They're going to be they're going to be a tough team here in the next few years. And we'll we'll stick. We'll give our our host a chance to uh, shine here again. Uh, sticking in the in the division, we got the Nashville Predators. Uh, they're not a team that has the deepest prospect pool by any means, um, but they have goaltender Yaroslav Askarov, who they drafted with the 11th pick overall last year, which is very high for a goaltender. But at the time, he seemed like a can't-miss prospect. Um, we all saw his struggles at the World Junior last year. He, he had a couple of bad games, rebounded okay his last few games, and his stats so far this season over in Russia are are good, not great. Um, you know, what do you, where do you think Matt um, Askarov is in his development? I mean, he's still a teenager and we all know goalies take for you know different paths. Do you, are you concerned or is this just natural development for a young goalie? And I have no concerns uh, for him. I mean, like you said, goaltenders take a lot longer to develop. I mean, you rarely see a carry price, you know, carry price stepped into the NHL and he was, really good at a very young age. Um, you don't get that type of guy very often. A lot of the time, goaltenders, even if they're first round picks, they take a few years to get going. And, you know, he's not having a horrible year in Russia. He's been split between the KHL and the VHL. VHL is like the AHL level um, in Russia there. And I mean, his numbers don't look horrible. He's got above 900 save percentage uh, hovering around that two uh, goals against average. It's not, it's not bad. It's not amazing. You know, like, uh, you know, Jesper Wallstad <laughs> stats are this year, but uh, I mean, yeah, like you said, he's still a teenager. I have really no concerns about his development. Uh, National players are going to have a number one goaltender for years to come with this guy. I mean, he's, he's probably, like you said, can't miss. I think he's still a can't miss prospect. He's going to develop into that. Um, just have to be patient. And that's, that's the nature of goaltenders. You got to be patient with these guys. You don't want to give up on them because you see so many goaltenders that are third, fourth, fifth round picks come. And all of a sudden, you know, they're number one goaltenders eventually. So goaltending is a very hard position to scout and project. So yeah, I, I have no problem with, with what he's doing. Uh, predators still have a great prospect with him. Ah, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a central. Um, we'll do the same thing. Who's your best prospect in this division? Uh, starting with Peter here, uh, who you got? Well, it's a good thing. Greg said Quentin Byfield last night because I didn't want to say the obvious pick because we all knew who, who, who is at the top of that. So I went with Brooke Gold for that reason, but I'm going to go with possibly who I think is the top pick in this division. And Matt, you mentioned him briefly before, and that's Marco Rossi. Um, given the fact that what happened to him with his bout of COVID, and the struggles that he had coming back, playing for Austria at the uh, Olympic qualifiers, looking really good in his first games back. And, you know, already a point per game player in the AHL right now with 11 assists and 14 points in 10 games. I mean, this is a player who's been consistent ever since he came into uh, came over to North America um, over a point per game as a rookie in the OHL way over a point per game in his sophomore season gets drafted um, you know, ninth overall by the wild, um, given his smarts, his awareness, his, his passing abilities, his ability to create space, he, he has the smarts already. And I think that's something that you can't teach at a young age. And he's had that ever since he, he came over to North America. So the fact that he has that going for him, he has the skill. I think it, it just makes him that much more deadly. And you know what, again, throw the size away because he's a damn good player and, and mm -hmm. his smarts and, and IQ is a result of that. Yeah, Rossi's been amazing. Uh, you know, the way he, he bounced back from that, in, you know, the injury and stuff like that. And it's very hard for a guy to have to deal with this stuff. I mean, he, he was, he had to deal with a heart problem and uh, COVID. It, yeah, to him to come back and actually be that dominant player again is amazing. Um, Greg, yeah, uh, you got Rossi as well, or do you have someone else that you're picking? <laughs> No, I went another route and um, I'm going to go with a guy that 
from a team that we forget is now in the central division. And that's Dylan Gunther of the Arizona Coyotes. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. I, I, I was kind of worried Peter was going to take him. I know he's, <laughs> he's high, very high on Dylan. Um, but you know, this kid is, is he's back in the OHL this season and or I'm sorry, uh, WHL. And he's got uh, 10 goals, 21 points in 18 games with the Edmonton oil Kings. You know, he fell down to the ninth slot in, in Arizona. This was a guy that definitely a lot of people thought top five pick. Um, but again, we've we've talked about it so many times that last year's draft was so weird and funky. And um, so Arizona got themselves a real good player uh, at the ninth spot. You know, his shot is so technically sound. There's not a lot of holes in it. Um, and that, that, you know, at that age where you don't have to work a whole lot on your shot, you can work on a lot of other things in, in your game. It, it puts him ahead of the, of the curve. Um, you know, it, it's his shot just explodes off his stick. It's, it, it catches goaltenders off guard a lot. Um, and when he doesn't have the puck, he's so good at finding those soft areas in the ice where he gets to sp- the space to use that shot. So he's just such a smart player very talented and lord knows the arizona coyotes need as much young talent as they could possibly get that organization is just a a mess right now beyond mess i mean they make the vancouver canucks look like the tampa bay lightning right now so (laughs) it's uh it's a mess and it's all it seems to always be a mess maybe one of these decades they'll figure something out in the desert and get themselves going but uh he's definitely one of those players that you can you can build around I, i'm very high on him he's my top prospect in the central yeah i'm just gonna make it quick and say it's Genta for me too because that was my pick i was between rossi and him and then you mentioned again you know Genther is just i was high on him during the draft as well and i i had him i think i had him close to the top first overall pick at one point and uh i think i had him as a first overall pick just what i remember but he yeah and for the fact that the Canucks traded that pick and they could have got him is making me a little angry as well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Genther's my top pick as well. So, um, so we've hit the midway point, uh, two out of four divisions. Uh, we'll talk about the next two in the, in, after this. And this is the Prospect Corner uh, presented by the Hockey Birds. If you enjoy the show, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and a lot of shows, uh, you know, from all a lot of the teams, um, Blackhawks banter, uh, Saber Scoop, uh, Maple Leafs Lounge, uh, list goes on and on, Chicks and Sticks, um, many more. And uh, make sure you sign up for our morning skate newsletter. Uh, lots of great content uh, every morning and, you know, some fun, fun facts, fun stuff uh, in that newsletter. So make sure you're signed up for that at uh, morningskate.io. And um, make sure you're checking out the hockeywriters.com because there's a lot of content coming. World Juniors coverage draft, you know, that's all coming up. So stay tuned for that. And um, yeah, so and daily download as well uh, for all the uh, quite a few teams, uh, all the stats, recaps, all that. So um, yeah, so just make sure you're checking all that stuff out. Um, so yeah, bills are paid. Let's continue the show. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the Metro uh, division. We're going for we'll go out east now. Um, or somewhat out east. <laughs> we'll start with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, they strengthened their prospect pool in 2021, but uh, we'll talk about the guy, James Malatesta. One of those players, he was a late round pick again. We've talked a lot about late round picks so far. So there's a trend. Um, is he someone that's going to be flying under the radar? There's a lot of top prospects in Columbus. This guy's maybe a little bit forgotten about, Peter. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I know, and I know we like to focus on the big names too. But he, he like during the rookie tournament in Traverse City, Michigan, he was one player uh, that I took notice of. Um, obviously, you know, Igor Chinnikov, um, Paul Sellinger, all those guys were like massive standouts for the Columbus Blue Jackets. But just his drive and his motor, it it, it automatically caught my eye because these are players that are going to be crucial, especially in that bottom six kind of role. Um, he's going to be a major foundation as a third line gritty in your face kind of winger, despite having a small size of stature. And I know that's going to be a common theme, but he doesn't let that get the best of them. You know, he's going to go in and battle for the puck and he wants to come out on top. And, you know, even his production so far this season, I mean, it's pretty good, you know, 10 goals in 19 games, 16 points overall. Um, 
obviously you're going to focus on the big guys or the big names in Columbus, but Malatesta is definitely one that can, can fly under the radar. Um, you know, he's going to be possibly an important player for them down the line because once the other players and you need to fill out more depth, he's going to be one of those role players that you're going to be heavily relied on. So I think he could be a very useful asset for them in the future. Yeah. Malatesta, I get, honestly, I kind of forgot about that guy and, uh, <laughs> You know, when you, when you mentioned him, I, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> he's on the blue jacket. So uh, he's going to be a guy to watch as well. And yeah, well, what we talked about in the past, the last um, segment about teams with deep prospect pools, um, Carolina Hurricanes. <laughs> I mean, here's another team that has a deep, very deep prospect pool. They're dominating the Eastern Conference right now. Um, they were unbeaten on, you know, on, uh, to start the season. Let's talk about a goaltender here, uh, Greg, uh, E2 McAniemi. How has the season gone in the AHL so far? Is he the goaltender of the future uh, for the Hurricanes right now? Um, he might be. The organization's very high on him. I mean, obviously, um, you know, goaltending has kind of been their, um, you know, their boogeyman of sorts the last few years. We all know about all the talent, you know, skating wise. They went out and signed Freddie Anderson, um, and who's been fantastic. But you know, I don't think you know Peter here can tell us that you know. Let's maybe not, you know, put all our <laughs> eggs in one basket. You know, Anti Ranta is good when he's healthy, which is like four games a year. So you know, they definitely need to solidify that position going forward. All this young talent, even if Anderson is great this year, you know, he's 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 getting up there in age. He's not going to be around forever. Um, McAniemi is like one of those guys I think is kind of people have forgotten about, um, with Carolina, just because they've got so many exciting young players coming up and some of them were starting to see in the NHL, but he, I mean, he was drafted in the fourth round, uh, back in 2017, I believe it was. So he, he's been in the system for a while. He's, this is his first year in North America. Um, he played 41 games in, uh, Liga in Finland, the last two seasons. And, uh, there he, in those 41 games, he put up a, uh, 11 save percentage and 2.43 goals against average, which is pretty impressive for, you know, someone in, in his stage of his career, but he's been great since coming over to the HL. I've had it. Um, the wolves are one of the teams I cover. I've seen a lot of his games in person, saw him play last night. He's just so confident in the crease and he has been since his first game. Um, there's been a few games that he's, he's literally stole for the wolves this season. Um, he makes those big saves. He's so good within the crease, moving side to side. He's very confident. Um, uh, doesn't give up a ton of rebounds, which is always good for a young goaltender. And usually when you ask a coach, about goaltending, they kind of cringe a little bit. Most head coaches hate goaltenders. It's just a fact. They don't like talking about them. But when you ask Ryan Warsawski, the coach of the Chicago Wolves, about uh, McNamee, he actually gets like, he lightens up a little bit, which is rare for him. He's a very serious guy, but he, he's a big fan. And he's said, uh, he's told me personally that he's a pro and he's going to be a really good goaltender that he just, he puts in the work. And he, he's, he's got the mindset to be an NHL goalie. So I think Carolina, you know, this is one of those guys that I think a lot of people there have forgotten about, but when it comes to that goaltending position in another year or two, he could be, he could be the guy, but then again, we already thought they had the guy and they traded away him pennies on the dollars this past off season. So we'll see what happens. And uh, we'll, uh, Keep rolling in the Metro division. I've got a little question here from Matt. We're talking about Connor McLennan, uh, who was the Philadelphia Flyers sixth round draft pick back in 2020. And uh, he's dominating in the WHO uh, with the Winnipeg Ice. I mean, that team's got like a million high scorers right now. He's got 14 goals and 25 points in his first 18 games this season. Um, problem is he hasn't signed that entry level contract yet. And the flyers have until June 1st to do so, or else he will become a free agent. So two quick questions for you, Matt, regarding McClellan. Um, does he get that entry level contract before the deadline? Or do you think his five foot eight stature is going to hold him back? Um, and maybe he'll have to sign elsewhere. Um, but do you think he'll eventually become, you know, a, a top nine scoring threat in the NHL? Yeah, I, I think he'll, he'll, he will sign, um, you know, 
the organization seems pretty high on this guy. And uh, I mean, he, he hasn't signed his ELC, but I mean, that's, I think he will eventually get there. Um, we've talked about a guy, a lot of guys that are smaller and will they succeed? I think this guy can, I mean, he's a great two-way player. He's got a great shot. Um, he, he's scoring at will last season. He, he was scoring quite a bit as well. Um, like you say, the ice have just stacked with talent too. So, um, but I think he's got that two way game that, and that grit. And he's, he said in the off season that he wanted to get stronger, um, to be able to battle in the corners a lot more. And, you know, he, that's the thing about smaller guys. If they're, you know, they gain a bit of weight and strength and, if he's, you know, quick and skilled, uh, you could see uh, how many, how many smaller guys in the NHL are succeeding right now, just because of their hard work and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Because if you work hard, it doesn't matter how big you are. Um, you can probably succeed. I mean, not all small guys will, uh, we'll see when he actually gets to that level in the AHL first, we'll see how he battles there. And, but I think he's got the talent to make it as a top nine scoring threat. Cause he does have a great shot. He is fast and he's, he has some grit to him too, which seems to be a common theme with smaller guys. I mean, if you're not uh, a battler, I mean, you're probably not going to make it as a small guy too. So I think he's got, and I, I, I like smaller guys that are succeeding too, because they're always behind the eight ball just because of their, um, they were born, you know, to be smaller guys. So uh, it's great to see them succeed. Um, so yeah, we'll do the same thing. Um, Metro division, who's the best prospect, uh, Peter, what, what do you, who do you got? I am going to go to the New Jersey devils and select the younger brother of, uh, Jack Hughes and go Luke Hughes because I mean, let, let, let's face it. Um, he, he's, he, this is one of the top defenders in last year's draft. He had great mobility, great poise, great puck handling and great movements with the puck. And it's evident this year right now with the University of Michigan. I mean, he's just another major offensive talent on a stacked team. And given the fact that he ranks six among freshmen in points per game, the only defenseman in that category or one of the top defensemen in that category, it's pretty impressive already with 13 points. And, you know, they, it's, it's, it, things are just going to keep getting better for him. I mean, the New Jersey Devils needed to bulk out their defensive positioning, and they got one of the be- one of the top defenders in the draft behind Owen Power. And you could make the argument that maybe Brand Clark should have been higher than Luke Hughes, or vice versa, and everything like that. He he he's undoubtedly the top prospect in that division right now because you look at some of the players that have been drafted or like teams that have been giving away picks like the New York Islanders and the, and uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, their prospect pools really aren't that deep. And teams like the New Jersey Devils are taking advantage of that by getting those top five picks and they're making it count. And Luke Hughes is going to be that top pick for me. Yeah. Luke Hughes is just, he's an amazing talent and we already know what Quinn does. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> and we said Jack could be better. I mean, not Jack. Oh my gosh. Is this, he's Luke. on the same team. <laughs> Luke. <laughs> too, many brothers, you know? <laughs> too many Hughes brothers in the NHL. Uh, yeah. Jack's doing well this season too. Uh, uh, but yeah, he, he's going to be great. Greg, who do you got uh, in the Metro? I'm actually going to stick with the New Jersey Devils, who might actually be good here in a couple of years. I'm going to go with Alexander Holtz. Um, mm. I, I'm a big oh, fan of his. And I think some people may have like for – ungodly reasons and maybe soured on a little bit because he hasn't made that impact like his former teammate uh lucas raymond has but not many rookies are going to do that um he had an assist in his five games with the devils but down at the ahl level uh he's got four goals in five games with the undefeated 12 and 0 record setting utica comets right now so um the kid is an elite deadly sniper um, with with a, a great release, and he's only 19 years old. So I I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, um, you know, if people have kind of been like, see his numbers. He didn't have great numbers in the little bit he played in the AHL last season, um, and hasn't made that impact yet. But he's 19. He's not going to make that impact just yeah. yet. He was drafted seventh overall for a reason. A kid that has that kind of shot and that kind of release, um, he's going to be good. And, and I think he. Uh, 
you know, that, that devil's team is building something out there. And then, um, you know, they're not going to be your father's devils of the, uh, you know, nineties where they bore you to death and, and beat you one to nothing. This is going to be an exciting team in a couple of years for sure. And Alexander Holtz is going to be a big part of that. Yeah. The devils are just amazing. And I, I'm going to go with the guy that's probably not going to be a prospect very much longer, uh, in Dawson Mercer. Uh, he's, He's on the Devils as well. Uh, we're going to have a clean sweep <laughs> here. Right. And, uh, I mean, what he's done in the NHL so far, he's he's making a case to be in that Calder Trophy conversation. And at this point, it's we'll talk about Raymond later on. Um, it, it's He's just been everything for the Devils so far. And uh, we already know what he does what, before he even makes it to the NHL, what his two-way talent and his intangibles. And he's showing it. Uh, so far in the NHL. And uh, like I say, prospect wise, he's probably not going to be one for very much longer. Let's guess that 25 game mark. Uh, it's going to be um, no prospect for him anymore and uh, be a full time NHL or so. Um, yeah, he's been great. So three devils on that <laughs> one. And there's a lot of good prospects in this division. So those are just three of them. Um, we'll go to the final division, the Atlantic division. A uh, bunch of Canadian teams in here talk about a team we've talked about a ton on this show already. And uh, Greg, you're probably getting annoyed with it. <laughs> uh, Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> they have an abundance of riches in their prospect pool. We've talked about them before. Uh, Lucas Raymond. He just continues to impress his, his point totals just keep going. He's a, almost a point per game guy he is a point per game. I believe um, he's not slowing down. He, you think, Oh, he's probably going to slow down. So at some point, not yet. Um, now we have a bigger sample size. We've talked about some smaller things. Oh, maybe he's just on a run. Um, is he now the front runner for the Calder trophy, Greg? Uh, what do you think about this guy? He's just been amazing. Well, first of all, I don't know why you guys keep giving me the darn Red Wings questions. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do to piss you guys off? But, uh, <laughs> no, he's fantastic. Um, I mean, I think he's, he, you could consider him the front runner for the call. I mean, we're, we're not even a quarter of the way through the season to go. So there's a lot, long way to go. And these young players tend to hit a wall at some point. And, you know, not saying he's going to for sure, but there's a good chance he's going to get, you know, that cold streak because, you know, he's never played an 82 game season before. So it's tough for a young player who's used to playing 40, 50 games a year all of a sudden it's late February, you've already played 60 games and you just got nothing left. Um, and how do you, how do you like keep pushing forward? So we'll see what happens. Um, I think uh, it's wide open now that, you know, Cole Caulfield has made us all look like dopes and um, you know, <laughs> but he could still get his hat back in the ring before this is over with uh, Raymond is a front runner his teammate in Mo Sider, he could take away some votes from those two guys may split some votes. You mentioned Dawson Mercer. He's a guy I keep my eyes open on. He's, he's uh, I think second or maybe third in rookie scoring right now. Um, I'm a big fan of his, uh, to be honest, I hadn't seen a whole lot of him until this season. And, and you mentioned him, Matthew, and, and he's putting up the offensive numbers, but I love his game because he's a pest too. I mean, yeah. he's, he's got that Brad Marchant, like just, I'm really good at hockey and I'm going to punch in the back of the head if I can. And he will. And I, I love that. And uh, another guy that if he could stay healthy, I think could be your Calder winner. Um, but he's had some issues is bone Byram in, in Colorado. Uh, he's such a special talent, but he, he just had another concussion and that's been a problem for him. And you really got to worry about that at a kid of his age, just 20 years old. He's supposed to be coming back this weekend. Uh, hopefully he gets back out there and is healthy, but I'm always more impressed by young players that can perform at a high level at the def at defense rather than a skater. I think it's more challenging to be a productive yeah. NHL defenseman at 19 or 20 than it is to be a right or left winger. So if, if Byram can stay on the ice for the avalanche and be a productive player for one of the top teams in the league, I think it's his trophy to lose. Yeah, I mean, there's actually a pretty big crop of rookies this year. And we, we thought, oh, Caulfield's got it. But there's so many guys that have just emerged uh, in this race. And I don't know if we thought it was going to be that uh, that much competition. And, and there's definitely been them. Um, we talked about Cole Caulfield, uh, his demotion and stuff like that. And he was called up. I mean, he's back in the, in the NHL. He's back with the Montreal Canadiens after a pretty good showing in the AHL. But we're not going to talk about him. 
<laughs> we're talking about a couple other guys the Montreal Canadiens have in their pool. Uh, Xavier Simino and Joshua Roy. Um, Peter, could these be late round gems um, that could prove to be useful uh, in the future for the Canadians? Yeah, this is going to be difficult for me considering the team that I write for and family that I have. So I hope they're watching this because I'm going to say some really great things about these two players. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I mean, given where they were selected, I mean, Xavier Simino, I believe, was an overager drafted in the sixth round, 31 points in 16 games so far in the QMJHL. And uh, 31 point, yeah, 31 points in 60 games. I don't know why I got confused there. And Joshua Roy, <laughs> who was a fifth rounder, 150th overall in 16 games this year as well. And, um, you know, he 31 points in 17 games. So you have two Montreal Canadian late round draft picks that have, that are in the top three in scoring in the QMJHL right now. And that's a good sign to look at. Um, you have Simino who's, you know, definitely a reason why he was looked over again, size five, seven, didn't quite have the whole package, but maybe, uh, this pat, uh, in 2021, he upped his game and, and Skat saw a difference. Um, Joshua Roy, he was a player who, you know, had top 62 potential or top 64 potential written all over him as a second round pick, possibly maybe a third rounder, but as the season wore on and his consistency and offensive production came into question, you started to see him dip in the standings and maybe he may have fallen to a late third, early fourth, but he went to a fifth round and that was a little bit, surprising but you know given how up and down the year was for some players they were able to play games not able to play games and the queue had to shut down because of COVID as well I mean these are two players that are like having really good seasons having really good bounce back performances especially for Joshua Roy who saw his uh, stock dip a bit this year so the fact that the Montreal Canadiens are taking a chance on him with his size with his grit with his ability to drive to the net they need that size they need players who have that drive and determination and Joshua Roy fits that description and he's having a really strong year and some, and same with Seminole. I mean, despite being a smaller guy, um, it's going to be more of an uphill battle for him because of that. But it, we, we see how many like, you know, players that are less than five ten have a, a major impact, you know, Johnny Goudreau, Patrick Kane, Mitch Marner. Um, now, is he going to be elite level like those guys? Probably not, but he's definitely going to be a serviceable player and could be a high energy player for them in the future. And I, I do think that as a result of this year, these two players have may have vaulted them into the conversation that they could be a top five, top 10 prospect for this team right now. Yeah. I mean, Montreal Canadiens, I mean, Cole Caulfield, it's, he's probably their top prospect still. I mean, once he plays enough games, he won't be, but uh, yeah, those two guys are, could be uh, pretty good for them in the future. And Matt, um, going over to you right now, um, you know, obviously the Buffalo Sabres have an abundance of talent. Um, You know, we saw who they drafted first overall, Uh, but Jack Quinn was always a big question mark. Um, He's leading the Rochester Americans in points right now. Um, 16th overall, fourth in the fourth overall in the AHL when I last checked. Um, bit of a controversial pick considering, you know, there were names like Marco Rossi and Cole Perfetti that were available to them and they elected to go with Jack Quinn. Um, everyone thought that that was a big mistake, but is this now a move that's starting to pay off for the Buffalo Sabres? Um, I'm kind of in between on that. I mean, we'll see what, what happens when they are full-time NHLers. I still think Marco Rossi is going to be the better guy. I mean, but I mean, Quinn's sure showing that he was supposed to be drafted at around that point because uh, he's just, he's ripping it up in the AHL right now. And, you know, having some great chemistry with uh, Peyton Krebs, new guy that they just got for Jack Eichel. So that could prove to be a great um, addition just because, you know, if they have chemistry in the NHL, that's going to be even better. So, uh, I mean, Quinn's a great two-way player. I think that why a lot of people thought, well, he's not going to be a, a supreme offensive producer in the NHL. I think maybe that's why they said, oh yeah, he shouldn't have been drafted that high. But I mean, he's showing that he can be a producer, at least in the AHL right now. We'll see what happens when he gets to the NHL level. But that's a good sign because uh, most of the time when players are dominating the AHL, they most likely will be at least productive in the NHL because um, those levels, there is a step, but it's not huge that you're going to be like, well, I mean, we see it that it, there's guys that dominate the AHL, never translate to the NHL too, but 
um, there's not a lot of prospects that don't do well in the AHL that that's are bad in the NHL. So, um, but yeah, Quinn's Quinn's going to be a great talent for the Sabres and Sabres got a pretty stacked pool with power and, and Quinn now and Peyton Krebs and, yeah, it, it's going to be great to be watching them. And this division in general, we'll, now we'll talk about the best prospects in this division. It's going to be hard. Um, is it Raymond? <laughs> right now, Raymond's probably, or Mo Sider. I mean, these guys that, Peter, who, who do you got? Or is it a pretty <laughs> obvious answer at this point? <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go a different route because they're already closing in that 25 game mark. I'm going to change it up a bit. And um, just to, just to correct myself, 17 points in 13 games for Jack Quinn. Uh, they recently played and still third overall, nothing to sneer at. Uh, but I am going to stick with the Buffalo Sabres and I am going to go with a player that you probably mentioned last week, Matt and Owen power as yeah. the top pick in this division. Cause Let's face it, wanted to go back to and dominate uh, the NCAA again after a really respectable rookie year with Michigan. We're seeing that already right now. His, his two-way game, his ability to jump into the rush, his point production is up, his goal, his shooting is up. Um, this is a guy who's going to who's going to have a very well-rounded game when he gets it in the NHL. And for a team like the Buffalo Sabres right now, that's going to be a huge bonus. Um, granted, they've taken some major strides this year. I don't know if uh, the success they had is going to be sustainable, but they're going to be a lot more competitive this time around than the previous years. And by the time that Owen Power comes up and, you know, like Jack Quinn and other prospects and Peyton Krebs, this is going to be a really deep team. So I think Owen Power is definitely going to be the top pick in this division for this point at the, at the moment. Yeah, like you said, a lot of these guys are like Raymond and Sider, they're closing on that 25 game mark. They're not going to be prospects for very much longer. So, uh, <laughs> so talk about some other guys. <laughs> uh, Greg, who do you got as uh, top prospects in this division? First of all, I'm actually rather surprised that uh, Peter didn't go with Fabian Lizell on the Bruins because I know that's been one of his <laughs> favorite players of all time. I had him written down as maybe one of my picks, but I figured he would have been taken. But, um, I too am not going to go with the Raymond or Cider route because I don't really think those guys are prospects anymore. Technically, yes, but they're full time NHLers at this point. So, um, and the guy I'm going with is another one that isn't going to be considered a prospect very much longer. Uh, I'll go with Spencer Knight, uh, the goalie right. on the Panthers. Um, he's a franchise goalie. There's a little doubt about that. Um, we saw what he could do last year. He got thrown in uh, two elimination games against the uh, back-to-back champion Tampa Bay Lightning, and he held his own, won one of those games. Um, he's splitting time behind Sergei Brabovsky right now. Uh, he's he's uh, 5-2-0 and with a 2.98 goals against and a 904 save percentage. Not the world's greatest numbers, but he's winning when he's out there. The team's winning when he's out there. Um I don't know if playing, having a 20 year old blue chip prospect split time at the NHL level behind a very high paid and talented veteran is the right move. Personally, I'd rather have him down in the AHL playing two to three nights a week, getting that time in. Um, But the Panthers have decided he's going to be their one B goalie right now. And, you know, we've seen Bobrovsky kind of struggle since showing up in Florida. That hasn't been the case this year. He's been really good this year, but, you know, maybe they're thinking at some point he'll be the, you know, Knight will be the top goalie there. But personally, I'd have him in the AHL at this point in his development, but he's playing well when he gets the chance to do it. So uh, I think he's the top prospect, but probably won't be a prospect very much longer. Yeah. Spencer Knight's been amazing. He was, uh, undefeated in the NHL for a while there. <laughs> he's gotten his first two losses, but uh, yeah, he, I think he's going to be that future. But again, you know, behind a guy like Bobrovsky with that massive contract, I mean, when are they going to, they have to move him or say, you know, Spence Knight's our guy now, because you got to start, you got to start eventually saying, you know, who's going to be your guy. Cause Bobrovsky still got a ton of, t- ton of time on that contract and massive uh, money there too. So uh, my pick and mention him is Fabian Lysel. <laughs> uh, he he's been doing really great with uh, the Giants uh, here in Vancouver here too. And uh, we know his talent level and he dropped. Uh, I thought he was going to be a lot higher in the draft and he's very talented uh, NHL player. I mean, not NHL yet, but I think he will be a very talented NHL player and top six guy. And his skill level, like we've said in the past, is off the charts. And uh, he's going to be that cre- very creative 
and he's shown that in the on the Giants and the Giants were very happy to get him over here. They weren't sure if he was going to actually come over. They drafted him that import draft and I wasn't sure he was actually going to play, uh, but he's playing and he's uh, playing a pretty big role over there right now. So uh, Lysel's my pick. Um, there's a ton of talent in this division. It's ridiculous. I mean, you got you could pick again. We were like the Pacific. There's a lot of a lot of great prospects in this division, and um, unfortunately, Toronto Maple Leafs don't have one <laughs> in I, I there that you could say really. <laughs> I could have easily picked Topi Diamela or Matthew Dyes, but given the names that are you know roughly ahead of them, I mean, great prospects overall. But I, I mean, I it probably still could have picked Diamela, so I'm going to give an honorable <laughs> mention to him. How about that? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Rodion Amarov could be in there too, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, it, it, there's still a lot of talent in this division, which uh, again, a division is to be very um, exciting to watch in the future. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the run through the divisions and lots of great prospects. And uh, we'll talk, probably be talking a lot more in the future for them and uh, in the world juniors, some of these guys will be there. Um so we'll get to our wrap, you know, a quick fire here and to the end of the show here in the prospects of the week, as we normally do. Uh, Peter, we'll start with you. Who's your prospect of the week uh, that are we haven't mentioned uh, yet? <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm going to show my bias. I'm going to show some love to some of the Toronto or to the Toronto Maple Leafs and Matthew Nyes right now. So um, I'm going to pick him mainly because he's been at a just under a point per game average in the NCAA as a freshman. Um, he's six goals, six assists in 13 games being a heavy relied on, uh, as, as a first timer in the uh, university of Minnesota and already on a really good team as well with the, like the likes of Chaz Lucius and Tristan Braz as well. But his ability to drive to the net, never give up on the puck and the size his speed. Um, he's, he's, I'm, I'm surprised at the steps already or the massive step that he's taken in his development, because obviously we saw that skill set later on in his draft year, because he had a rough start dealing with COVID as well. But right now we're seeing a reason why he was drafted where he was and maybe should have been drafted higher because right now he's playing like a top 50 or early second round pick right now. So I'm highlighting him right now. Uh, Matthew Nye is my prospect of the week. Yeah, Nye's has been has been really good. We've talked about in the past too. Uh, power forward guys, he's, he's going to be um, great to watch. Uh, Greg, who you got uh, prospect of the week? I'm going to pick a guy that could have very been easily been picked as that top Atlantic Division prospect sticking in that division. I'm going to go with um, University of North Dakota defenseman Jake Sanderson. Of course, he was drafted fifth overall by the Ottawa Senators back in 2020. Um, This is a kid that was heralded for his defensive skills, which are top notch. Um, Definitely going to get him to the NHL, but he's added more offense to his game so far this year, which is obviously a good thing for the Senators moving forward. Last season, he had six goals and 15 points um, total. Um, and he's already got 15 points already this season. I'm sorry. He's already got 22 points. No, I'm reading this wrong. He's got 15 points this season. Um, so he's already matched his point total. He's got two goals, 13 assists. Um, you know, he, uh, I've totally screwed up his stats. I am in the wrong order. He's got six goals, 15 <laughs> points in 11 games this year. He had two goals, 15 points in 22, all of last season. Um, feel free to edit that if you need to, um, <laughs> But half as many games, he's already got three times as many goals and as many points as he did all last season. So he's obviously made the effort to add offense to his game, which has already been superb defensively. So he gets my shout out doing well in uh, North Dakota, you know, one of the powerhouse programs in all of college hockey and um, definitely a bright future for him in Ottawa. Yeah. Sanderson, we talked about him uh couple episodes ago too so i mean <laughs> he's another guy we'll be talking about a lot and i'm gonna go and show again uh my bias to the vancouver canucks and uh i mean they don't have a lot of top prospects anymore but they got some guys that are in that lower end uh and i'm gonna go with uh jonathan myronberg um uh, over in sweden another swedish defenseman uh, the canucks seem to love drafting and love developing um he's on quite a run right now in the j20 league and j20 national and there he's got two goals, seven assists, nine points in 14 games. And a lot of them have come in the last few games. Uh, he's got, uh, he was on a big point streak, uh, broken on the, uh, on, you know, this past week, but uh, 
got another assist on the on um, today. Actually, he just got he played today and uh, got an assist and got a great point streak. He's a good puck moving defenseman. He's a plus fifteen in that league right now too. In one game, he had a plus, it was a plus five. I don't know which was plus minus, but uh, he hasn't had a minus in a bit. Uh, so I mean, it's a guy to just to watch. Late round pick. Uh, never know what to happen when he gets to the NHL level, but uh, just seeing him perform is is great, and uh, we'll see what happens in the future for for him. Uh, but he's my pick for prospect of the week. Some breaking news right now. Uh, just minutes ago, Jeff Merrick tweeted out that NFIM Ducks have returned Mason McTavish to the Peterborough right. Peets. So big news for the Peets. Is- um, big news for Team Canada. We all know what's coming up. So make, make of that what you will. There you go. Breaking <laughs> news on Prospect Corner. So, yeah, it's, uh, uh, Mason McTavish, uh, he's just pretty good for the Ducks. He, he kind of fell yeah. off production-wise. He wasn't really after his first couple games there, but uh, looked like he belonged. And I think, again, just like with uh, LaPierre and uh, Washington and mm-hmm. Eklund, I think it's better that he goes um, play some big minutes yeah. back in junior and uh, tear it up again tear it up again because uh, he, like I said, fell off production wise. And it's not really good for guys, these young guys going through slumps, especially when they're uh, young and developing still. Yeah. So go back to junior place for team Canada. He was great in the under 18s. Oh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> Canada's going to love to have him. That's for, that's for sure to add him to that, uh, to that talent uh, pool. I already have. Pretty high, so. And play wise um, too, he was he didn't look fully out of place. He looked he looked he looked like he was able to hold okay. his own. Obviously, yeah, the production wasn't there, but he was able to keep up. So that's a really good starting point for him. Yeah, and uh, the way the Ducks are playing right now, they don't really need. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they, they got, got Troy a ton. Terry. They got a ton of guys. Troy Terry. I mean, that guy's <laughs> um, not a prospect, but uh, that's an aside. Uh, yeah, so that's that's another episode of Prospect Corner. A bit of a long one this time, but uh, a lot of great information, a lot of great uh, talk about the prospects in the divisions, how they're doing. And we'll have this type of thing periodically throughout the season, but we're going to start talking about World Juniors uh, really quick here. So uh, we're closing on the end of November. Uh, once December hits, we'll be talking knee deep in that, uh, that talk because World Juniors is amazing time to watch these prospects. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that's it. That's the show. Uh, thanks guys for, for another great episode of prospect talk. Uh, this has been the prospect corner presented by the hockey Raiders. Again, if you enjoy the show, make sure you're hitting that like button, subscribe to the hockey Raiders, uh, YouTube channel, um, sign up for a morning skate newsletter, uh, great content there. Like I said, um, morning skate.io daily downloads. We're on discord, um, at the hockey lounge, lots of great talk over there. Uh, check that out. Um, and of course, hockeywriters.com. There's a lot of great content on that on the website every day, uh, daily download as well. So that's that's it for Greg and Peter. Uh, this is Matthew, and uh, thanks for joining us in the Prospect Corner. We'll see you next time.